Good morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. We're out here today at the Pathfinder School classroom where I have a whiteboard so that I can use it for some crude illustrations during this video. This is part two of Woodcraft on a Budget. And I want to start out by further differentiating the word woodcraft from bushcraft so that there's an understanding of why I'm calling it woodcraft and not bushcraft. Woodcraft is a term that was traditionally used in the U.S. for going into a wilderness setting with tools and being able to affect your long-term core temperature control, comfort, and convenience, the three C's that we talk about at our basic class, and be able to do that by using the things around you off the landscape to build or woodcraft those items. And that would include things like building things to procure food, like traps, like fishing implements. It would also include things like being able to make snowshoes if you needed to, being able to make a raised bed, being able to make a proper shelter, being able to use plants and trees as medicine, as cordage, as fire making materials. All of those things are encompassed in the word woodcraft and many people associate that with the word bushcraft, but they're different. Woodcraft and study of woodcraft has to go back to archaeologically using the tools that the people used in the woodcrafting era of the U.S. And that's what it's all about to me. It's about experimental archaeology and calling it what it is. If we're going back to that time period of the early 1900s, what they call the classic camping era, and we're going to study the writings of people like Daniel Baird, people like Thomas Sutton, who were innovators and promoted the movement of the modern-day Boy Scouts of America, then we need to understand the tools and the concepts that they held close to them so that we can emulate that to understand woodcraft. And that's what I want to do today with you guys. And we're going to start with knives. We're going to start with fixed blade belt knives or sheath knives as they were called. And then we're going to move on from there. So, so if we are going to talk about sheath knives, we need to understand what the blade profile or the blade shape of those knives would have been in that period of time because they're completely different than a lot of knives that we use today and they're completely different than what people consider a bushcrafting type knife. So the first profile that would have been used from the late 1700s all the way through the 1930s, 1940s and the preferred knife of most woodsmen would have been just a plain old butcher knife. And it would have been a straight blade with a slight hump on the front that would have dropped down and sometimes curved or sometimes been straight on the bell. And this could have been a pronounced curve here and then it would have been pointed here. And the purpose for a knife like this butchering style knife was that it was easy to skin and bone animals with this knife. This hump actually helped to lift the skin up to slice it open. And that was the concept of the butcher knife and this curved blade would help you shave skin away from the carcass. It would also assist you in carving down certain select cuts of meat and things of that nature. And the butcher knife was the main knife that was carried. It was the main belt or sheath knife carried by a woodsman because it was the most useful to them for the task that they chose to use that knife for. That's another thing that we need to understand early on is that the belt knife or sheath knife that the woodsman carried was not his main carving or whittling knife. He used a pocket knife for that. This knife would have been reserved for exactly what it was meant for, butchering and processing meat and game. The second popular profile for a woodsman would have been what was called the Kephart, which was basically a spear point type knife, excuse my drawing abilities here, that looked similar in profile to this, but it would have only been sharpened on one edge here. It would not have been sharpened on the top. And again, I've got some examples of those spear point type knives as well. And then you had the regular French trade knife, which was a French style butchering knife that was just straight across here with a sweeping belly here to a point that looked very similar to a kitchen knife. Okay, let's talk real quick about blade grinds and blade geometry. Most of the blades that were used as belt knives were very similar to what you see in an old hickory butcher knife. They were very thin. An eighth inch blade would have been heavy. Most of them would have been probably thinner than that and they would have been repurposed kitchen type knives or butchering type knives. 
So because of that, they were kind of limited to the grinds that they could use. There were very few hollow grinds like this in that period because there wasn't enough material to create that other than in like pocket knives and folding knives. So the majority of the knives that you see were a bit of a convex grind like this or they were pretty much what's called a V grind or what's known today as a Scandinavian grind and that's just a buzzword of the day. That V grind has been around for hundreds of years before it was ever called a Scandinavian grind. But it's just a straight V grind. So you had a V grind and then you had a convex grind. I would suspect that more than likely 90% of them would have been a convex grind. But if someone were being meticulous he could have made this V grind. And I do have a knife myself that was forged probably in the 1800s. That's a butcher knife that has this V grind to it. It is one single bevel on the blade in a V. And that is also known today as a Scandinavian grind. So if we are trying to use due diligence in our experimental archaeology and we are trying to use the tools that would have been available to the woodcrafter of the past, we're going to have to get past all of this thick blade stuff that we think about nowadays with survival knives and one tool options and the heavy duty bushcrafting style knives that you see today they had very thin bladed knives. So we're going to have to find things with fairly thin blades. And that's very easy for us today because we can always fall back on the old hickory butcher knife. If you were trying to do budget bushcraft, it's easy to fall back on a more SL1, a more SL2, a more MG. Very cheap, very robust, going to last a long time for you and do what you want as long as you're not trying to smash wood with them. But that's not what the knife was used for. And this knife would not have been used for that unless it was an absolute emergency. So in the woodcrafting world, it's very easy for us to fall back on things like the old hickory butcher knife. That's very cheap, would have been a very good representation of what they would have had for a belt knife.